Hello and welcome to another video by Day Night Gaming. Today I'm going to be doing something a bit different. I'm going to be interviewing a fellow Final Fantasy player. Joined with us today is Matt. Hey. So you've played quite a lot of MMOs in the past. If possible, could you list those MMOs that you've played so we can get a little bit of background on your gaming experience? Yeah, played a couple. Started off playing Ragnarok Online. Played quite a bit of uh, World of Warcraft. Star Wars, The Old Republic, Terra, Dragon Death, Vindictus, a bunch of other indie ones, and Final Fantasy, of course. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so you said you started off with Ragnarok Online. If you could, could you please tell everyone the things you liked about that game, as well as the things that you didn't like about the game? Uh, Ragnarok? It was good. I mean, the community aspect of that game when... It, and the original launch was uh, was amazing, you know, crafting and uh, I guess uh, they didn't really have a market for it. It was more of a just a market, right? In Ragnarok. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that whole aspect was pretty cool. Yeah, what I didn't like about Ragnarok was like the, the insane grinding you had to do from level ninety plus one level. It was just days. It could be days depending on what you were killing. And then you would rebirth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, rebirth. As soon as you hit that, you know, level 99, it's like rebirth, start back at one. And you, that's when you question, like, well, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. And then you mentioned crafting. How did you like that? What were the things you liked about crafting? Well, in Ragnarok, it wasn't so much a crafting as it, it was just upgrading your current gear. It was, it was fun. It, it, you know, thinking thinking on it now, I think I just like gambling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you didn't know if it was going to explode, right? Going from like 8x to 9x enchant, right? Exactly. And <laughs> hey, man, that's that's a big difference. You know, it, it's it's either your item is worth 1 mil or 10 mil, you know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. And then you said after that, you played WoW. Back in the days, it was just WoW, but now we refer to that as either vanilla or classic WoW. What were the things that you liked or disliked about vanilla WoW? Vanilla WoW was definitely the community, again. I think that's a big reason why a lot of people play MMOs, right? It's just uh, be a part of a community, you know, play with other people. So in vanilla WoW, it was when they had the separate factions, your account couldn't have an alliance if you already had a horde character so you know players really were against the other faction now nowadays it's that 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 whole aspect's gone everyone they just can flip-flop whenever they want but but just speaking on vanilla well i think the grind back then was kind of rough especially since you know i was just coming off of ro uh not too much mmo experience yet so kind of grinding through the game i think i think my my experience from ro kind of went into WoW, and I just had that grinding mentality. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear you, I hear you. And then, talking about WoW still, you continue to play WoW, and now we call that, or we refer to it as Retail WoW. What are the things that you like about Retail WoW, and what are the things that you dislike about Retail WoW? Things I like about Retail WoW are a lot of small quality of life fixes that they did. They removed a lot of the, the annoyance that was there in vanilla, like reagents that you needed, holding every key just to access a dungeon, mounts and pet tabs. Oh, transmog. That's a thing I like. That, that's good. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, what I dislike? Oh, man. It's just, I don't know. The content started just dropping off. You know, it started getting kind of boring. Community loss was, was a big thing. Yeah, it just felt like with every expansion, the circle of friends I had on the game was just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Like, I wasn't meeting players, like, ran, like strangers in the game. I mean, I still have IRL friends that play, but compared to vanilla, yeah, you just don't have that kind of community anymore. Yeah, you bring up a very interesting point. Back in vanilla WoW, when you wanted to go to a raid, one, you would have to actually shout to find people on your server. But also, you had to actually run to the raid. There was times where if you didn't run with a group, you could be ganked on the way with World PvP. Whereas in retail, now you can queue up. And then also, you don't just queue up with 
your server, you can queue up within a group of servers. So the people yeah. that you end up queuing up with, you might not actually ever see again or play again with, right? So yeah, exactly. And that's, and I think that's what's causing the whole community, you know, drop. It's just, uh, you, you, you hop into a know, LFG, you know, to, and after running the dungeon, you don't really make any guess like friends to run, you know, future dungeons with instead you just peace out and then queue up for the next dungeon right after. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So after a while you played a bunch of other MMOs. You mentioned playing uh, Star Wars. What were the things that you liked and disliked about that game? Yeah, Star Wars, that was that was a different MMO for sure. And all the other MMOs I played before that, there wasn't really a story I, or I never really cared for a story. It was just create a character, go in, all right, start grinding, get to max level, you know, fight a couple bosses don't need to care about it at all. With Star Wars, the one thing I liked was the, I guess it's an MMO, but you can play it like a single player, right? There's a big story, especially for your, for your own character class. Every class has its own story. And you know, that, that was a really awesome thing. What was that? Help me out here. It was a, the PVP football. Hut ball. Hut ball. Yes. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That ball. map is a, uh perfect when it comes to the pvp aspect because you have your pvp but you also have a very well designed map that had gates on where you could go and when you couldn't go it wasn't a flat plane so you had to strategize on how you would cross the map and it, it had an aspect of a capture the flag slash deliver the flag so you also had roles for tanks you had roles for dps and you have roles for healers and casters to all do their part uh, yeah, yeah that, that was great that, that that i mean you know we we've all played wow we've done uh war songs so we kind of knew that capture the flag deliver back to your base kind of style but hudball took it to the next level man that was that was awesome man i missed that game yeah yeah no i hear you i hear you what was your favorite part about a hutball or your favorite aspect of PvP and SWOTOR? You know, with hutball, it was just, you didn't have to be the main, I guess like, you didn't have to be the MVP to, to really have a lot of fun. You could be there to support my character. I, it wasn't, he wasn't going to be able to tank all, you know, all the enemies, but as long as I can pull someone and get them across the finish line, that I think that was like the cl you know those clutch moments what made it fun for me. Yeah, and you know you bring up a very interesting point because it's one of the few PvP games out there where you don't have to do top damage in order to be good. Correct? Yeah, you exactly. can do other yeah. things. Yeah, like in WoW, a lot of the PvP fights are you just throw bodies, right? You know, everyone just bums rush each other hopefully you can drop them before they drop you but with uh with hutball you know sometimes you gotta play sneaky you gotta, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get behind enemy lines without them seeing you right on right on all right so now this brings us to final fantasy 14 which you're currently playing at the moment what are the things that you like and what are the things that you dislike about ff14 oh uh some things i like uh I like not being locked to one specific class, you know, being able to play all the classes. That's, that's something, that's something I've only seen in one other MMO. The name is, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. What is it? Eden? Maybe Eden something, but, <laughs> but you know, that game didn't, it, it didn't pull it off as well, but yeah, being able to play any, any class at any time, that's a huge plus the story in the game. I mean, I I didn't go through all of the story in FF14, but in Shadowbringers, you know, that was pretty good. And yeah, the community, it's it's not as I guess close as LOL or RO, but it, most of the players are not as toxic as uh, as as uh, WoW. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And that's not to say that we don't have toxic players in our community, but for the most part, there are a lot of friendly players who are willing to extend all the branches, willing to help with dungeons and, and whatnot. There are people out there who just play just to play, play just to meet people. 
Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, FF does, it, it handles it handles that pretty well. You know, when you go into a dungeon and you're doing, you know, the, the run isn't going as well as you expect. And then you look over and you see a lot of the players have a, kind of like a sprout icon. That's when you're like, oh, everything clicks. Like, okay, they're new players. Instead of just putting them down, maybe give them some advice, help them improve a little. But in other MMOs, you don't have that kind of visual cue. Instead, it's just you go in and it's like, ah, oh, okay, maybe they're new, maybe they're not. I don't know. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. But what are the things that uh, you dislike with FF14? Honestly, I can't think of anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, my own personal experience is... As much as I love the story, I've, I've seen every cutscene that my character has experienced. Even after the story squish that they just recently implemented, I noticed that the original 2.0 A Realm Reborn storyline is still kind of uh, harsh for new players. It's a very long slog. But I mean, yeah, it is. But I think they keep that in there just because it's a Final Fantasy game, right? You go into any Final Fantasy game, and it's always story heavy. Yeah, that's true. That's true. For me personally, another aspect that I dislike is the fact that your class is linked to your weapon. And that means that whatever class you are, they'll never be able to use a different weapon type. So for an example, for those who don't play Final Fantasy XIV, if I wanted to play as a warrior, I have to equip a warrior axe and I can never equip a sword onto my warrior. If I was to equip a sword, say a regular sword, it would then turn me into a gladiator or a paladin. And if I wanted to equip a gun blade onto my warrior, it would turn me into a gun blade. So that's one thing I dislike. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely something that, that other MMOs have over FF. Like in WoW, as an example, a druid, they're able to use staves, daggers, you know, maces. They're not, they're not locked into one style of weapon. Uh, yeah. Whether or not that weapon is good for them, uh, you know, that's debatable. <laughs> but... But at least that, that choice is there, you know? They're yeah. able to have their character look however they want. And I guess that's that's why the WoW's tra transmog system is um, pretty up there. Yeah, yeah, true, true. All right, so if Final Fantasy was to have a newer MMO to come out in the future, what would be some wish list items that you would have for that game? Definitely a improved transmog system like WoW. Maybe a... Maybe a built-in DPS meter. I mean, I know they have Stone Sky C. Maybe just some type of scoring system so that at least you can tell whether or not your DPS is doing well. It doesn't have to announce it to everyone in the party after a run because I know that could lead to some toxicity among players. But even just for yourself, that would be cool to know whether or not you, you know, you're pulling your own weight or not. Yeah, you mentioned Stone Sky Sea, and I've been thinking about this as well. I wish that there was like some type of, not a rating system, but a system in the game that could tell you like your own personal score whenever you fight a boss. As in, not like how much damage you're doing, but according to their own internal information, are you doing your part as your role? So yeah. like the developers could, whenever they make a dungeon, go okay this boss if you do this amount of damage you would get a c rating or a b rating or an a or a triple s and yeah. then uh, it's not something that would display to the other players but just something for you as a character to know okay i did really good in that and i i got this many points and you could get rewarded for how many points you get uh, a lot of other games do something similar to that granted they're always like single player games but i think it could help uh, because... No, I mean, uh, Dragon Nest, I don't know if you've played that. I think they definitely did that after every dungeon. Vindictus, I think they did something like that, right? I think so, yeah. I think that's where I'm getting this idea from. Like, but I could be wrong. I've played quite a lot of MMOs as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head, but that's, that's also what I was envisioning. A, a system that just, you know, because I remember playing a game like that before where, you know, we'll speed run the dungeon and at the end it's like, you know, triple S or something. You know? Yeah. So yeah, that, that would help for players to know if they need to improve without putting them down, without uh, having 
any other players know what's going on. I definitely do like the fact that at least we have an enmity meter in the game. So we at least know how much aggro we're creating without having to download a mod. That's really nice. Uh, from a tank's point of view, it's really nice being able to visually see that. So I, I wish there were a bit more tools that, like you said, that could help players know how well they're doing. Yeah, that would be really great. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, if we're talking about other wish lists, I mean, maybe the tab targeting system could be uh, worked <laughs> on a little. Uh, this game doesn't have the best tab targeting, but I mean, you know, it, it does its job, kind of. <laughs> yeah, true. True. Well, is there any other closing thoughts that you would like to discuss before we wrap up this video? Uh, no, I think I'm good. No, thanks for having me on. Yeah, definitely a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. And uh, hopefully maybe in the future, uh, we could have you back um, discuss more stuff. I know that there's a new uh, Final Fantasy 14 patch due to release sometime in December. So yeah, we definitely love to have you back. I had a great time. Same. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. And for everyone else who stick to us all the way through the end, thank you so much for viewing and have a nice day. Goodbye.